So today we are going to discuss metaprogramming in Ruby and specifically how to dynamically define and call methods as well as use method missing. So what is metaprogramming after all? In general it means that the program can analyze, transform, modify itself in the runtime. This concept may seem difficult if you have never did metaprogramming, but you'll get the idea very quickly. Ruby as a dynamic language is really friendly to metaprogramming and actually it is one of the most powerful features about Ruby. Using it you can write really concise and clean code. However, don't overuse it, because there are some trade-offs to take into consideration. So, to start off, we will discuss a special method called send. Using it, you can actually send a message to an object, saying which method to call. So, here is a quick example. This is a basic class with two methods. Using the traditional approach, I instantiate the class and call my math1 using dot notation. And here is how I can uh, call another method using send. So send accepts a symbol as a first argument and uh, this is a method's name to call. And as uh, a second optional argument is an array of arguments to pass to that method. One thing to note about send is uh, that it does not respect privacy. Even if I mark uh, this method as private, it will still be called. A less known fact about uh, send is uh, that uh, there is a public send method uh, that uh, does respect privacy, and so you may use it instead. What send allows us to do is actually choose which method to run during runtime. Uh, this is a nice example of metaprogramming. Let me modify our program a bit, allowing the user to choose which method to call. First of all, remove the lines with private and that line with dot notation. And now we have to display a prompt for our user and read the data that he has entered and call the corresponding method. And so, first of all, I am writing my prompt. And then I am just going to use the getS method. Also strip all the white spaces uh, from the end and from the beginning and also convert it to symbol. And now I am going to take uh, that method name and place it right here. So now uh, the method is called dynamically. Alright, uh, let me try that. And I am entering my method 1 and well, it works. However, what happens if uh, our user enters method name uh, that does not exist in our program? Obviously, an error will be raised. Uh, can't we try to define a method uh, with the requested name on the fly? But of course, uh, first of all, let's check if our object responds to the provided method, and we can easily do this with a respond to method. It accepts a second optional argument, true or false and false is uh, the default value. When set to true, it will also search among protected and private methods of the object. So now, if the object does not respond to the requested method, let's just define it dynamically. And this technique is called a dynamic dispatch. As you see, I'm creating uh, the class method, uh, called a dynamically define, uh, that accepts a name as the sole argument. And inside we are going to actually define our method dynamically and call it, well, as the user requested. Also note uh, that uh, the second argument is the block and in this case I pass uh, a variable to this block. And uh, this way I mark, I mark sorry, uh, that uh, this method can accept one argument uh, with a text, some sample text. And well, actually, let's display uh, the method's name uh, that was defined for the user. And let's just try it out. I'm entering some uh, method's name. And as you see, everything is working pretty nice. So we've just created our dynamic dispatch method. Just to let you know, uh, the dynamically defined method can be removed and uh, this line can be rewritten with class exec method. It allows you to dynamically evaluate blocks of code in the context of the provided class or module. Uh, 
So uh, this way I am simply pasting uh, this code here and in the contents of my class I simply define my dynamic method and uh, the program should be working uh, pretty much uh, the same. So let's check it out. And well, I'm going to define some methods and as you see everything is working just great. Now let me show you another solution to responding to non-existent methods. This solution involves using a special method uh, called method missing. Method missing is a private method defined on basic object and what it does is simply raising a no method error. Uh, so as you see it is uh, present right here. You probably know that with Ruby it is really easy to redefine methods and this is the case where we will do just uh, like that. You can redefine method missing and explain an object what to do when it cannot respond uh, to some method. So here is a really quick example. In this case my class has only method missing defined. So when I am calling non-existent method, uh, this message is being displayed and note uh, that no error is raised. So now let me create a more useful class and call it superhash. Uh, this class will be used uh, just like this. So we are going to instantiate it by passing a simple hash to it. And uh, then we are going to call methods like 1, 2 or 3 to get uh, the corresponding values. So uh, this line should return 3 and for example uh, this line should return nil uh, because uh, our hash uh, does not have such key. So first of all uh, let's add uh, the initialize method to this class and store uh, the hash in the corresponding variable. And also let's add uh, the attribute reader. Ok, so I'm going to define this method, add in the attribute reader uh, right here and now we are coming to the interesting part. What we have to do is check if uh, the hash has a key uh, that uh, the user requested. If yes, return its value and otherwise return nil, just like ordinary hashes do. So first of all I am converting uh, my method's name to symbol and now I am asking my hash if it has a uh, such key. So if it does, we simply take uh, the corresponding uh, value and if it is not, we return nil. Great. So now we can run our script and it should be working just fine as you see here. Uh, there is one more thing uh, that I wanted to mention. Currently if I try to ask if my array responds uh, to the 3 method, for example, it is going to return false. And of course uh, this is not the case. So, to fix uh, this problem, we have to redefine yet another method uh, that is called a respond to missing. And uh, this method initially is uh, defined on object. And uh, here we just have to redefine it and include our own conditions. So, uh, here I am just going to check if my hash has uh, uh, this key. And if it does not, we are just going to call super and super is going to um, go back up on hierarchy and call objects uh, respond to missing method uh, that is always going to return uh, false. The idea is really simple. Uh, when we call a respond to on our array, uh, it return uh, false, of course, and uh, then Ruby tries to call a respond to missing on my object, and uh, the actual result is being returned. So in our case, we have uh, true for our uh, three method uh, that was uh, uh, defined using method missing technique. So today we have seen metaprogramming in action and discussed useful Ruby methods like define method, send, respond to, class exec and method missing. Hopefully this video was useful to you. What other topics do you want me to cover? Share your suggestion in the comments and don't hesitate to post your questions. 
So, see you soon.